apartment. I'm Kay Adams, and yeah, welcome to our super studio that I built with my bare hands. Pretty proud of it. We're living in the upside down right now. We really are, and we're all just trying to make the best of it. So truly, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you're healthy, I hope you're staying safe, and I'm thrilled that you made the decision to stay in and try to win a ton of cash. On tonight's episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire on ABC, Modern Family's Eric Stone Street and actor-comedian Will Forte played really exciting games and a whopping $125,000 was won for charity. And now you, and you, and you, and you, and all of you are just up to 20 questions away from taking some of that home for yourselves. Here's how it works. We play the game pretty much like the millionaire show that you've been watching for the last 20 years. I'll start by asking up to 15 questions that will get harder as we go up the ladder. They have to get harder, duh. You only have 12 seconds to lock in your answer, so act wisely, choose quickly, and just like classic millionaire, you do have three lifelines to help you, but you can only use one per question. In this game, we have the 50-50, that's where the app removes two of the wrong choices. You can go with your audience where your answer automatically locks in with the most popular answer choice and double dip. It is ah, an OG millionaire lifeline where you get to choose two potential answers instead of just one. If there's still multiple of you left after 15 questions, you smarty pants, then we go on to something we call the battle royale. And that's where I ask you to answer another five questions but this time, to make it a little harder, you get no lifelines, zero. So make sure to burn those on the first 15 questions. Don't worry, if you miss one along the way, you can keep playing for fun, you can practice, even if you can't win any money. What else are you gonna do? I'm sure you're done streaming the Tiger King already. Plus, I'll be back with more Millionaire Live next week. So if at any point you all mess up and get out all at once, we'll give remaining players from the last question one more chance to get one right. Everyone ready? Capiche? You get it? Let's do it. Let's play Millionaire Live. Here's your first question. Question one. Which of these words means a highly intelligent person? Nitwit, blockhead, genius, gronk. Uh, noticing that my name, K, isn't one of the available options here as you have 12 seconds to lock in your answers. Maybe it's because I made the mistake of telling the writers last week that I thought that TaskRabbit was a new dating app. So I thought it was an honest mistake. You would never make that mistake because you're a highly intelligent human ready to rock these 15 questions. And you know the smartest move ever is to come back next week too to play more Millionaire Live. So much cash to give away so you can finally splurge and get that who wants to be a millionaire tattoo you always wanted like right across the chest or back tat. Like what? No, I'm not gonna judge. You do you. You can see Gronk crushing it in the WWE. He always does him. And you can catch nitwits hoarding toilet paper all over New York City. But the word that means highly intelligent is genius. Genius, just like all of you millionaire livers out there who nailed it and are moving along. If you want a piece of this $125,000 pot, listen up. Let's roll on to question two. Which of these has never been a flavor of syrup at IHOP? Strawberry, blueberry, boysenberry, dingleberry. Writers, are you serious bringing up IHOP with none of us in our houses right now? What are you thinking? Uh, I'm over here eating uh, frozen waffles and surviving on string cheese for four weeks now and you're bringing up three stacks and buttermilk pancakes and chicken fried steak and eggs and the breakfast sampler and like that funnel cake thing that they sometimes have and isn't always on the menu. Stay strong out there. Okay, well, your answers are locked in. 125K on the line. Most IHOPs now have four flavors of syrup. Butter pecan or pecan. Tweet me about what way you think I should say it. There's old fashioned, which is similar to maple, strawberry, and blueberry. The flavor that's never been on an IHOP menu is... Dingleberry. Never thought I'd say dingleberry on a live broadcast, but here we are. Dingleberry is the answer to... Number two, get it, just poop jokes, just to get them out of the way. On to question number three. In the Bible, Lot's wife turns into what? Pillar of salt, Tupperware of taco seasoning, fanny pack of cinnamon, plastic baggie of oregano. 
This is flying, by the way. Three questions in already. Are you pumped, confident, worried? Let us know how it's going on Twitter. Tweet at Millionaire TV, and you can use the hashtag Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Or for tonight's purposes, Who Wants to Be a One Hundred Twenty Five Thousand Dollar Heir? It kind of works, and who does? You do, of course. So lock it in, and remember, you have those lifelines for only the first fifteen questions. In the book of Genesis, two angels tell Lot's family to flee Sodom to avoid destruction, and they're warned not to look back on the city. But Lot's wife looks back and turns into a pillar of salt. Huh? You know, somebody sold me a bag of oregano once, but that's a story for another time. Kidding. Uh, all together now, let's take a small step forward and toward a serious prize, 125k. Let's go. Here comes question four. Which state's most populous cities are named for Christopher Columbus and Moses Cleveland? Maryland, Minnesota, Iowa, Ohio. By the way, before you screen grab and spell shame all of us here at Millionaire Live, the A in Cleveland isn't a typo. There's different theories as to why the city dropped the A, but they did. I gotta say, it's a pretty bold move. If you take the A out of my name, K, it would be, oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'll be dropping the A for my first name. Hard no. Let's get back to the question, shall we? Minnesota's most populous cities include Minneapolis and St. Paul. Maryland has Baltimore. Iowa has Des Moines. And Columbus and Cleveland are both located in Ohio. Woo! Ohio, by the way, to uh, Buckeye State's finest. You've got Steven Spielberg, LeBron. Halle Berry, Johnny Utah, Freddy Krueger, the characters from Third Rock from the Sun, all of my faves. Can you feel that? The pressure, the excitement, the $125,000 all in ones just making it rain in your living room. It's cash money and it's getting closer and closer. We're taking on question five. Eric Stone Street dressed up as Fizbo the Clown decades before playing him on what sitcom? Will and Grace, Modern Family, the Big Bang Theory, Blackish. This is wild. Eric Stone Street was a contestant on tonight's episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire on ABC. I gotta say, he was looking a little nervous, maybe anxious, excited, definitely. And he, he and Will Forte crushed it, winning 125 Gs for charity. How did they do it? By using lifelines like you should be doing before we get to the Battle Royale. They're, they're about as useless as my attempts to learn TikTok dances off of YouTube in my living room. It's, not a pretty sight. Okay. When Stone Street was a kid, he created a clown named Fizbo and started performing that character at children's birthday parties. The show we're talking about just had their series finale tonight. Tears. And for years, you could find both Fizbo and Eric on Modern Family. This ABC hit has been on the air for 11 years and it's over. We will miss you, Eric. You'll always have a Kansas City Chiefs and we'll always have Fizbo. Wow, look at these numbers. Way to go, everybody. Let's ride on to question six. On Fleek was first popularized as a reference to what body part Mona Lisa seems to lack? Eyebrows, teeth, neck, fingernails. Little art history lesson as you lock in your answer. Leonardo da Vinci began the Mona Lisa around 1503, but some people think he actually never finished it. Okay, number one, she looks great for 517 years old. Like, I need the name of your dermatologist right now, great. More importantly though, you're telling me this became one of the most famous works of art ever and he didn't follow through and finish? He's me with my gym routine, my New Year's resolutions? the 17 novels I've bookmarked on my bedstand, my spirit animal, Leonardo da Vinci, is on fleek. This overused expression, by the way, was first popularized by a 16-year-old named Kayla, and the body part she was referencing was... Eyebrows. Eyebrows on fleek was first posted on the now defunct Vine, oh, Vine. R.I.P. Blame TikTok, not me. Uh, look at you, still in it for $125,000. Let's do this. Let's move on to question seven. Who turned down the role of Buzz Lightyear in Toy Story but did voice Mike Wazowski in Monsters, Inc.? Chris Hemsworth, Zac Efron, Billy Crystal, 
Seth Rogen. Hey, did you know the voice of the dad in Boss Baby is our very own Jimmy Kimmel? Huh, join him as he hosts Who Wants to Be a Millionaire on ABC next week. And then right after, I'll be here. Same time, same place, same t tiny New York City apartment to give you more cash. Okay, so you might hear the voice of Seth Rogen in a few movies, but not Monsters, Inc. And Zac Efron is known for his roles in stuff like High School Musical, and for his abs, but definitely not the answer here. And who would put Chris Hemsworth and hide him away into a voiceover booth instead of showing his talent? Um, not him. The actor who did turn down the role of Buzz Lightyear but did do the voice of Mike Wazowski is... Billy Crystal. The nine-time Academy Awards host says Buzz Lightyear is the only role in his entire career he regrets passing on. Hmm. Okay, wow, a lot of you guys got this one right. To 125 G's and beyond. It's question eight. Barbie doll creator Ruth Handler had two children, Barbara and who? Jack, Ken, Elliot, Joe. Anybody else hearing Barbie Girl by Aqua in their head right now? What if you just blared it for all of your roommates and neighbors to hear? I bet they'd really, really like that. Uh, sorry if you weren't thinking about that and didn't have it in your head, you definitely do now. Barbie, by the way, born in 1959, so she's not even a girl anymore. Uh, fact of the weird, she didn't have a belly button until she was 40 years old. Weird, I don't know how that happens, not sure what's happening uh, in Willows, Wisconsin, where she was born, and that's, I guess they're just late to the belly button game in general. You're not late to the game, you're crushing it so far. And Mattel's co-founder, Ruth Handler, named Barbie after her daughter, Barbara, and her son's name was... Ken and Barbie broke up in 2004, then they got back together in 2011. The dolls, not the siblings. I'm so happy for them. Uh, we're getting closer to the cash prize. I can feel it, I'm thrilled, I'm so excited. You're doing great. Next up, question nine. Physicist Amos Dalbert wrote a landmark 1897 article titled, The Cricket as a what? Food source, test subject, thermometer, metal detector. Hearing crickets is also a pretty good indicator that your jokes are not landing. Now, I'm not a dad, but you know what I'm talking about with the dad jokes like, hey Kay, I'm reading a book about anti-gravity. It's impossible to put down. <laughs> not funny. Or, if two vegans get in a fight, is it still considered a beef? See, hear that? Crickets. Back to the matter at hand though, uh, the specifics vary from species to species. Crickets chirp faster when it's hotter outside. Wrap your mind around this. This is a crazy fact. So using the formula put forward in this article, if you count how many chirps you hear in 15 seconds and add 40 to that number, you get the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So the correct answer is... Thermometer. Mind blown on that one. That's what? I've never heard of that in my life. Okay, coming in hot, here's question 10. When the writer of the Harry Potter series says her last name, it rhymes with which of these words? Howling, fooling, calling, bowling. Can we not with the Harry Potter? The writers on this show are out to get me for never seeing or never reading the, what is it now, seven books, eight movies? Listen. It's not that I don't want to like it or that I don't like it. It is just a fact of life that my only experience with Harry Potter was waiting in line for two plus hours with my five-year-old nephew crying, trying to get him on the latest Harry Potter ride. Not enough butterbeer in the world, people, which butterbeer sounds like the grossest thing on the planet anyway. Okay, your answers are locked in. Let's get back on track. You won't be calling yourself a winner here if you chose calling and you won't be howling with joy if you guessed A, but you will be moving on in this game if you chose Rowling. Her name is pronounced J.K. Rowling and it's plastered all over those seven books and eight movies. And just like that, take a look at you. You're rolling closer to $125,000. It's time for question 11. What unconventional hazard makes the Camp Boniface golf course in South Korea famous? Alligators? Landmines, nuclear power plant, quicksand. Want to know the biggest hazard here on Millionaire Live? It's thinking you have to fly solo for the next 15 questions. It's just not true. Pro tip, 
Don't forget you have help. Use those lifelines. You've got your 50-50, your double dip, you can go with the audience, and those bad boys might just keep you in this high stakes game tonight and get you within putting distance to that six figure payoff. Remember, once we go battle royale mode, you're on your own. See ya, bye, deuces, peace to the lifelines. Okay, back to the question. The unconventional hazard that makes the Camp Boniface golf course famous is... Landmines. Well, oh, doesn't that sound like a delightful way to spend your Sunday afternoon? The course, which is really just one hole, is on a U.S. military post just south of the demilitarized zone. Now, I could name 125,000 things that I'd rather do than play games in minefields, but instead, let's win you $125,000, shall we? Next up, question 12. Which singer's stage name is an anagram of her real first name? Halsey, MIA, Cardi B, Doja Cat. All four of these ladies need to be on your workout playlist, by the way. Tell me something, these past uh, couple of weeks, anyone else do the thing where you impulse buy an oversized and overpriced piece of workout equipment for your tiny shoebox apartment, then have to lug it upstairs where no one can help you, and then three days later find yourself on the couch eating nachos and having Netflix say, hey, are you still watching Narcos? Just me? Okay then. Uh, back to the question, MIA's stage name comes from the term missing in action. Cardi B's real name is Belka Lee, so yeah, no anagram there. But if you mix up the letters in the name Ashley, you get the birth name of singer... Halsey. Halsey, also a street in Brooklyn near where she used to live. I mean, her name is just as versatile as her music. Love her, and I love you out there, and you love money. So, let's go. It's... Question 13. Fittingly, the tech company Alphabet owns which of these companies? G, Q, S, X. If you're tuning in late, we are here for the first ever Millionaire Live. So exciting. Tonight, we're giving away $125,000. Yes, tonight, from your couch, from my living room, uh, in your beanbag chair, your bathtub, I won't judge, wherever, 125K. The bad news is uh, if you got here late to the party, you won't have a chance to win. But we're back Wednesday, April 15th at 11 p.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. Pacific time. To those of you still in the game, let's get back to the beginning, the alphabet. Alphabet's the parent company of Google, and the company they own that goes by a single letter was once known as Google X. It now goes by... X. X is a research and development firm. If you got it right, XOXO to you winners. Let's hit it. Question 14. Which part of speech is not found in this question? Adjective, adverb, conjunction, preposition. Hop on the DeLorean, pop back to freshman year English class, and lock in that answer. Before I forget to tell you, make sure you check out the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire trivia and quiz mobile game. It's in the App Store and Google Play. And you can even ask our everyday lifeline, our girl Alexa, to play millionaire. There's no better way to prep for this show, for me, for money, for bragging rights, than getting some reps in. Okay, let's Schoolhouse Rock this thing. An adjective describes or modifies a noun. Okay, that kind of makes sense. An adverb modifies a verb. So what part of speech is not found in this question? The answer is... Conjunction. Huh. Conjunction, junction, something, function, I think, sort of, kind of. I know in is a preposition. I'm confused. But if we switch subjects to math, though, it's clear lots of you are still in the running for $125,000. Okay, because I love you, I'm gonna tell you this. This is your last chance to use your lifeline. I don't even know if I'm supposed to warn you, but it's here. It's time for question 15. Whose Harvard senior thesis was about TV's impact on the presidency? John F. Kennedy, Conan O'Brien, Al Gore, Jim Cramer. Okay, while you lock in your answers, best TV president of all time. We've got Scandal, of course. Tony Goldwyn was awesome. Is the GOAT Dennis Haysbert from 24 so good? OG Martin Sheen, uh, great. But I'm gonna say that my vote would be for Julia Louis-Dreyfus 
all the way. Short-term prez, Selena Meyer is the GOAT. Agree? Disagree? Tweet me. Tweet us at Millionaire TV. Not only that, but we'll have updates and more fun. Use the hashtag, who wants to be a millionaire? Back to the real world we go. So whose Harvard senior thesis was about TV's impact on the presidency? The answer is... Al Gore. Did you get it right? Are you screaming? Thank you, Al Gore, for inventing the internet so I could be on Millionaire Live tonight and answer five, 15 questions straight correctly so I can be this much closer to winning $125,000. Did you do that? Let's go. 15 down. The pressure is on, and it's a time we've all been waiting for. No more lifelines. It's Battle Royale. Congratulations if you made it through and got all of the classic Millionaire 15 questions right. We're not done yet. Now, this is where things get even more challenging. Five more questions between you and potentially winning all that cash. From here on out though, like I said, no more lifelines. So, let's keep playing Millionaire Live. <sighs> Stressful. Question 16. On January 1st, when it's 8 a.m. in Las Vegas, it's 5 o'clock somewhere, including where? Ibiza, Bangkok, Dubai, Rio de Janeiro. Speaking of time, I uh, still have not changed my oven clock that I'm staring at right now since daylight savings time. I mean, who knew that I would be giving away hundreds of thousands of dollars from the middle of my apartment? Not me, definitely not anybody in my building. Quick shout out, by the way, to smartphone clocks. They deserve some credit. They take initiative, they auto-update for us. Wow, even the clocks don't want to be touched these days. <laughs> They're like, no, I got this. Can you just wipe me down? Time to get back to our answer. Uh, okay, where were we? January 1st, oh yes. Dubai is 12 hours ahead of Vegas, so if it's 8 a.m. in Vegas, it is 8 p.m. in Dubai. Bangkok is 15 hours ahead, so carry the one, and that would be 11 p.m. in Bangkok. So is Jimmy Buffett dedicating his legendary song to Rio de Janeiro or Ibiza at this hour? The answer is Ibiza, yeah, Ibiza stay nine hours ahead of Las Vegas, so let me break out my TI-89 calculator. That means that Rio is five hours ahead. This game is getting mathematical, scientific, historic, pop culturific, and more and more intense. Let's get closer to that $125,000. If you're playing a drinking game at home, by the way, just take a shot every time I say $125,000. It's Question 17. Which is not an ingredient in the original Nestle Toll House chocolate chip cookie recipe? Vanilla extract, baking powder, salt, brown sugar. Did you know that the chocolate chip cookie was actually invented by accident? I myself sometimes eat an entire box of them by accident. Maybe you do too. Mishaps happen, people. We're all in this together. Some of us might be peanut butter cookies, some of us might be snickerdoodles, sugar cookies, gluten-free ones, but we're all just cookies looking to get paid. We want, take a shot, $125,000. So what can you find in this recipe besides the two cups of Nestle Toll House semi-sweet chocolate morsels? Well, you will find one teaspoon of vanilla extract, three-fourths cups packed brown sugar, one teaspoon of baking soda, but you will not find baking powder. Wait, what? No one got that last question right? It's okay, it's okay, we're okay. The game's not over yet, that's all. Everyone who was in before that last question, guess what? You're back. You get one more shot at $125,000, and I hope you're ready because this is the final question. Anyone left in after this question gets a piece of that 125k pie. Let's do it. Here is question 18. If you drop a bowling ball on which of these bones is not in danger? Cuboid, navicular, cuneiform, capitate. Something about this question, I think it's the feet and the bowling reminds me of Walter Sobchak from The Big Lebowski, talking about toes and getting toes and there being ways to get toes at three o'clock in the afternoon with nail polish. Lock in those answers, we're almost there. You want the money, Lebowski? Let's get it. 
The cuboid is located on the outside of the foot. The navicular is located on the inside. Maybe you played a lot of operation when you were younger. It's coming in handy here. If you drop a ball on your tootsies, both of those bones are in danger. So is the answer cuneiform or capitate? The correct answer is capitate. That is a bone in your wrist, actually. So you use that to answer right or wrong. I really hope you were right. We have a winner. Oh my goodness. Congratulations. You did it. You just won Millionaire Live. Congratulations to you. And also, huge thanks to all the players who got out, but they stuck around and played for fun. Not to worry, you'll have a lot more chances to play and to win. I'll be back with more Millionaire Live on Wednesday, April 15th at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. And don't forget to watch Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, hosted by Jimmy Kimmel on ABC. I'm Kay Adams, so happy to meet you guys and get to know you. Thank you for playing. Please be safe out there. Be kind, be smart. See you next week.